being oppressed and saying we are oppressed are two different things. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. This is Amin with Sarah Masters developing the Muslim mindset for success. This week is a big one. It's the biggest, it might be the biggest mindset tip I ever speak about and I've ever spoken about. So these days there are a lot of trends, okay, and this specific trend here yeah, is being oppressed and being a victim. And some people even they seem to go out of their way to take on the identity of a victim. These days everyone is oppressed in one way or another. It's because I'm a woman, it's because I'm black, it's because I'm a Jew, it's because I'm Muslim, it's because you know I want to wear a dress even though I'm a man. It's because you know I want flipping, I want to be a cat. There was this woman I think in Sweden she said I'm a cat. I'm a cat in a human's body, okay? It just, it's funny, you know, when you watch it. But, she, you know, people like her, they're gonna say, I'm oppressed because people won't treat me like a cat. They, I, I go to school and I'm a cat and the school canteen doesn't have fish. And I'm a cat and I have to eat fish, you know? Or, uh, you know, in PE, in, in you know, physical ed education, sports, in school, we have to do swimming and I'm a cat and, you know, we don't swim, <laughs> yeah, okay? So, everyone seems to be seeking victimhood, okay? And some way to be oppressed. Now, no doubt, people are oppressed, yeah? But it's like people are taking it on more and more as an identity, okay? Now, what does that do? What's so bad about it? You know, oh, I'm oppressed and, you know, Allah is with the oppressed people. What's wrong with, with being oppressed? Well, um, it's an identity. That's a problem. When you take it as an identity, instead of saying, uh, you know, I'm a person, I'm living my life, I'm trying to do well, things aren't perfect, I'm, I'm just working on it and sometimes life is like this and, you know, if you're Muslim, you're making dua and you're asking Allah for help and stuff. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is where you say, I'm a victim, I'm oppressed, the world is out to get me, men are out to get me, uh, you know, the enemies of Islam are out to get me, Islamophobes are out to get me. This is not a mentality that is endorsed by Islam. Okay, uh, the first reference I would give is in the ayah in Surah Al Imran, where Allah says, "Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, wa antum la alauna in kuntum mu'minin." Allah is telling; He's giving a command to the Muslims. If you're truly believers, then don't be weak and don't be sad. You know, surely being weak is something you're not in control of, right? But Allah is basically saying you are in control of it because he's telling you not to do it. Allah doesn't tell us to do things we can't do right so how do you be not be weak how how do you not be sad it's how in kuntum mu'mini if you're true believers so if you're true believers then you won't be weak you won't be sad okay so that's the first uh, kind of um, area the first reference alluding to the fact that you shouldn't be oppressed you shouldn't take the identity of being you know weak or being sad right Next, we move on to other examples, okay? The fact that Muslims of the past and the prophets, they never, they would never saw themselves as victims and they always looked to themselves for how they can fix. They never said, oh, this person's oppressing me, someone else help me, yeah? I'm not gonna do anything, someone help me because, you know, I'm entitled to be helped, right? That wasn't the way they thought. For example, Yunus alayhi salam, he was in a whale. He's in the belly of a whale. How the flip are you gonna get out of the belly of a whale in the ocean, right? Not much hope there. What did he do? Did he say, you know, this whale swallowed me. Why is this flipping whale gonna be so dumb and swallow me? Whales don't even eat humans, blah, blah. Did he say that? No. Did he just complain, did, you know, whatever? No. His reaction was, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? How do we know that? He said, Subhanaka to Allah. Subhanaka, Allah, you, you are perfect. Glory to you. You're the best. You're perfect. You have no imperfections. Subhanaka, inni kuntu min al I was oppressor. I was an oppressor. How? Because he did something wrong. He made a mistake. So he's looking into himself saying, what did I actually do wrong? Okay. Next example, super powerful one very relevant one the Muslims they're in Mecca 
you know, they're being oppressed at that time. People being tortured, Muslims being tortured, Muslims being killed, um, you know, not allowed to trade with the Muslims. People are, they're trying to flush them out. They're trying to destroy Islam before it even gets its first feet, baby steps, right? The Sahaba, they go to the Prophet, salam. They say, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. They say, look, it's, it's crazy. Like, ask Allah to help us. When is Allah going to save us? It's, it's getting too much. They're tough people. The Arabs in the middle of the desert. They're used to eating uh, dates and milk and some bread and whatever, yeah? They're pretty rough people, pretty strong people, but it got it got to the too too much high level, right? They said to the Prophet, you know, and you can imagine as well, they were very dignified people, meaning they don't go and ask for help usually. They try and sort it out themselves, you know. This is this is the way of them, yeah. But it was so bad that they went to the Prophet, they said, When when's the help of Allah coming? And what did he say? Did he say, Yeah, you're right, it's really bad, it's true, we're oppressed, it's so hard. The, the the pagans, the mushrikeen, they're boycotting us, they're oppressors, they're bad. No, didn't say that. What did he say? He told them about people that came before them, where it was so hard for them, much harder than for the Sahaba. They would be uh, sawed in two because of their Iman, because they were Muslim, the Muslims before them, from a different Ummah, not the Ummah of the Prophet uh, they would be sawed in two because of that iman, and other people they would uh, their flesh would be pulled from their bone as a torture because of how, how much the enemies of Islam hated Islam. Okay, and he said they didn't give up their faith even though all that happened. And he said to them, what did he say to the Sahaba? He said, "La kum But you, you lot, you're you're too hasty. You're in a rush. You're not patient enough. Okay, so he put it on them. He told them, You're, take power yourself, be powerful. How do you be powerful? How do you not be weak? It's by putting it on yourself, saying, what can I do? So he told them, you can be more patient. That's what you can do, okay? These people, you know, we're doing what we can for now, but these people, they're doing what they're doing. You, it's up to you to be patient and be strong and increase your Iman, etc. you know? And lastly, the super super mindset tip around being oppressed and being a victim and taking everything on yourself looking at yourself what have I done wrong is how us as Muslims how we view sinners and how we view oppressors we actually feel sorry for oppressors because in the end we're being oppressed now inshallah we go to Jannah we keep our Iman we die we go to Jannah we're cool you know it's only 60 years 70 years of life you know it hurts <laughs> it hurts then we're gone these oppressors, they're the opposite. They do what they like in this life and then it sucks to be them once they're gone, right? So we actually look to them as victims themselves in a way like, like poor you, you know, you're, you're on the path towards eternal hellfire. You know, how bad is that? And you know, maybe you'll change, but you're on that path, okay? So a reference to this is in Surah Al-Kahf when there are the people of the two gardens and one has more than the other. And he says to him, he says, I've got more than you. He's kind of, you know, showing off to him, whatever. He's putting him down, making him feel low. Okay, and what does Allah say in the Quran in Surah Al-Kahf? He says, uh, He went into his garden. He went, the guy he, who's making the other guy feel bad. He went back into his amazing garden and he was oppressing himself. How's he oppressed? Because he was putting the other guy down. He was doing a sin. And therefore he's oppressing himself okay and there are many ayat referring to people saying uh, you know admitting at the end that yeah we oppressed ourselves because we sinned because we didn't believe etc so again it's like it's like actually okay things are bad for me now I'm being oppressed now but you're actually the bigger victim because you're oppressing yourself because you're doing these these bad sins right so the message is simple and I think uh, you know I've gone through it with those examples is that look to yourself right things are bad things are going wrong but what can I do to empower myself because when I point to myself and say I'm wrong then guess who can change things me I change about myself so could I reduce my sins could I increase in ibadah is there something uh, that I can think through to improve is there a skill I can learn to improve things you know what can I do right me what am I doing wrong Okay. The oppressor is doing whatever he wants. What can I do wrong? Yeah. And then secondly, don't be take uh, don't take victimhood as an identity. 
okay? Maybe things are tough for you. See, see yourself as it's tough, things are tough, this is tough, that's tough, but don't say I'm an oppressed person. It becomes an identity, it becomes a mindset, and that's disempowering. That's saying I'm oppressed, therefore I can't do anything, and so you don't do anything, you get it? So, I, you know, it's crazy. My first ever video on this channel is called Muslim Mindset, colon, just do you and that's exactly what i'm saying now with some more de depth and more detail and more examples and references okay so just do you um that is my message for this week this is my core core message and you know you can expect that i'll do other videos on it in the future looking at other examples and stuff but this is something that you need to share with people because too many muslims they're doing the opposite of what allah said in the ayah they're doing the opposite they're feeling weak they're feeling sad because they don't have uh, the mindset okay so share this with them and let's see if we can help people out inshallah this is something that I don't know how to be honest with you I can't remember exactly how but it's something that I learned from books and from just reflecting on the Quran and it must be someone told me about it right it's not like I made it on myself um, but it's so powerful and so useful you know so Jazakumullah khairan Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thanks for watching that video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in how to design your mindset and design your lifestyle as a Muslim so you can get everything you want done, then make sure you subscribe to this channel for at least weekly videos and check out the website right there where you can download free mindset resources and look at our blog with all the articles and stuff there. Uh, check it out and uh, see you.